integration by parts two. I think you remember last time when we did integration by parts, we did it in a very novel way. We had an I column and a D column, and it made the whole process really simple. And today we're going to continue, but this time we will do trigonometric functions and a slightly more challenging problem to show you how easy it is with this wonderful method. So let's begin with something nice like a polynomial multiplied by a trick function. How about cosine of 3x plus 1? And if you remember from the first part, what we did was put the polynomial in the D column. We made a D column and an I column. And the polynomial went in the D column because if you differentiate it a couple of times, it goes away, becomes 0. And in the I column, we'll put the cosine. Alrighty, so what do we do? We take the derivative a couple of times, how many times? Until it goes away. Take the derivative once, we get 2x plus 1. Hasn't gone away yet, so take the derivative again, we'll get 2. Now it's showing signs of disappearing. Take the derivative one last time and it's gone, poof. Take the integral as many times of cosine. Now, when you integrate cosine, you get sine. When you integrate the cosine of 3x, you will get one-third the cosine of 3x. When you integrate the cosine of 3x plus 1, you will get one-third the sine of 3x plus 1. When you integrate sine, it flips back to cosine, except there's a minus negative sign, so it will become minus, and it will be one-third of one-third, or one-ninth, Cosine 3x plus 1. Do it one more time, and we're done. If you do it one more time, it becomes minus 127. It flips back to sine, and we're all finished, except for this nice little trick of writing down the answer. And remember, we put alternating signs plus, minus, plus, minus, and multiply going down diagonally, and then write the answer down. And isn't that nice and easy? So the answer is going to be this times this, minus this times this, plus this times that. Let's put the one third all the way in front, and then we'll have a sine of 3x plus 1. Minus times a minus gives you a plus, so we'll have plus 1 ninth of this product, 2x plus 1, times cosine 3x plus 1. And finally, plus 2 times that, which is again minus 2 over 27, times sine of 3x plus 1. And then we end it all up with c plus big C, and that is the integral. We could simplify it a little bit because there are two terms that have sine of 3x plus 1. So if you're very fastidious about your algebra, you could group these together and take them out as a common, take out the sine of 3x plus 1 as a common factor. But in this particular problem, I don't think it's worth the trouble unless you're doing something with it to, if you want to go further. Now, wasn't that nice and easy? Uh, now here comes a more interesting one that doesn't work as simply as that where you cannot simply differentiate and things go away. And we saw an example or two in the first part involving things like logarithms. Well, what happens if you multiply an exponential function like e to the 2x with a trigonometric function? And let's make it simple like cosine x. Then uh, you might be in a little bit of a quandary. There are no polynomials. Remember, the polynomials are the nice things. If you differentiate them a couple of times, they're gone. This one won't go away because it's e to the 2x. So who cares? Uh, the question is now, what goes in the d column and what goes in the i column? It turns out that with this kind of problem, it doesn't matter. We could put the e to the 2x in the d column or the i column, and the same result will occur. So we're going to start with e to the 2x in the d column just because it's first. 
and the cosine goes in the i column. Now what happens when you start differentiating even the 2x, it, it kind of, well, when you differentiate it once, it becomes twice e to the 2x. Hmm. When you integrate cosine, it becomes sine, just simply sine of x. And this doesn't seem, this product doesn't seem any simpler than that product. Hmm. Well, that's not a very good sign. Getting a little worried here. Let's try it one more time, just for fun. So let's take the derivative and we'll get 4 times e to the 2x. And when you take the integral of sine, you get negative cosine. Uh-oh. It looks like we're back to where we started. e to the 2x cosine x, e to the 2x cosine x, except there's some numbers in front. But it turns out that this minus sign actually saves our day. Because if we stop right here, and remember, if you stop before you get 0, when you don't get 0, you have to integrate the, the result that's in the bottom row. There's the product here that you end up integrating. Uh, it'll turn out that this is the same as that, and something nice is going to happen. So I'll leave you in suspense, and we'll set it up as usual. And remember, when you have something left there, you integrate. So there will be a kind of integral sign of the product going across in the bottom row. So let me set this up. Uh, this thing I'm trying to calculate. By the way, let's call it i, just for fun. And i for Igor. So this is Igor. And how do you calculate Igor? It's this times this, e to the 2x times sine of x. Minus times a minus gives you a plus 2e to the 2x times cosine x. And here we get another integral. Uh, plus times a minus gives you a minus. And let's take the, because it's an integral, I can take the constant multiple outside, right in front. And I'll write this as 4 times e to the 2x cosine x behind the integral sign. But wait a minute, this is Igor, once again. So Igor is equal to some stuff minus 4 Igor. In fact, let's write this out in terms of Igor, in terms of i. i equals this stuff, which, by the way, has a nice common factor of e to the 2x. If I factor that out, I'll get sine of x plus twice cosine of x. minus 4 Igor, minus 4 i. But wait a minute, we can solve this equation for i. i is the unknown integral, and here we, go, we have an i, 4 i there, and i there, we can bring them together, and we get 5 times i equal to this other stuff. So what is i? Just 1 fifth of this thing on the right hand side. So let me let me go over here and i is one fifth of this expression, which is e to the two x multiplied by sine of x plus twice cosine of x. And don't forget to add the plus obligatory plus c. And we're done. We've integrated this rather hair raising expression without having to do u and dv in the kind of old-fashioned way that you might have been tortured with in earlier calculus classes. Uh, I think that's all we're going to do with integration by parts, but be sure to stay tuned for the next episode in calculus, and also don't forget to go to the website, appliedcal.com. See you next time.